This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown, and how are you, Larry? Good. It's uh, July in San Francisco, which means it's cold as hell. Uh, yeah, right. And here, uh, let's see here. Today it's going to be up around ninety-five or something. So, uh, a hot day in New York sounds miserable. The hot day in New York is. Do you remember that song, "Summer in the City" by the Love and Spoonful? And that, 1966, be- yeah. and that beginning of it that went dum, uh-huh. dum. <laughs> that is exactly how hot weather in New York City feels you know it's, that was a it's good song yeah but it's unrelenting it's really unrelenting I I am amazed by how how strong it was you know uh, how how uh, because it's like you're on a griddle there's the sidewalks which get hot. And then the buildings that radiate the heat, you know, it's not like this kind of heat out in the country would be kind of nice, you know? Yeah. You sit under a tree to get the little shade, and it's, you know, it's wonderful. But in the city, it's just overbearing, you know, so. And hot weather seems to make people violent. <laughs> Does it? I think so, yeah. Really? People are always fighting and... Tempers flare. Well, we're always violent here in New York City. We like, well, that's true. Yeah, we have a, a the the, we, the blood sport in our city is blood sport. So you <laughs> know, uh, it, it's amazing. It's just amazing. But anyway, uh, by the way, uh, if people are listening to this or watching this on on GabNet, because Larry doesn't have the facilities to be able to zoom us so we could see his ugly mug. Okay. I know. I'm hiding. You're hiding. I think your reluctance to uh, up the technology is because you just don't want anybody to see you. I think that's the attitude. Well, here. that's a part of it, actually. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, and and so consequently, what we do is we d- he's it, Larry is so important to this program that we're willing to forego that, <laughs> right? Because everybody else has to. We have to. They have to look at us on camera, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, some people told me that Zoom, do Zoom a lot. They, they uh, you can actually put filters on and stuff to make yourself not look quite as horrible. So. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't uh, that that'd be like putting uh, you know flies on shit. Okay, Larry. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, um, so I what I do is I put up a graphic that says Larry Bubbles Brown with a picture of you on it and a little <laughs> stuff moving around. Well, I finally decided I've had that same graphic going for so long, it's time to change it. Oh, and, which one do you get now? Well, well, there's a new one they're looking at right now, as we're talking, if they're watching us on GabNet okay. TV. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's um, um, uh, a new graphic with a new picture of you plus the old one in the background, and then okay. some bubbles animated in the background as a like the bubble yeah yeah bubbles and then uh uh it, just a thing that says larry bubbles brown on it so okay so it, it, we're we've freshened you up after what uh what did we say how many episodes 180 episodes? 178 i guess this will be 179 no we did maybe? we did 179 and 180 last time that's unbelievable. Yeah, so uh, we figured 180 episodes. It's about time for a change. So <laughs> we, we've we've run longer than Seinfeld. <laughs> yes. Mm. But we're not getting that syndication money. Well, you're getting that Gabnet syn- syndication money, and I'll send you your <laughs> check next week. It's in the mail. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I mean, do you want something? Because I, I, I make, I think off of GabNet on um, 
money from uh, Google, from uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 what, what, what am I using? I'm, my mind's a blank today. Uh, using uh, 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 YouTube, okay? Uh, YouTube, I think I maybe made three hundred dollars this year. Wow. Yeah, so if you want any of that, let me know. There are some people that make a fortune on YouTube. Well, you know, if you can get yourself a million views on anything, and there are people who do that very easily, uh, you can get about $4,000. Okay? So mm -hmm. uh, there are people who do things like unboxing the newest Apple computer and whatever, and they get like 2 million views. So if they bought that new Apple computer for six grand, they are making... You know, eight grand. So uh, th there is money in it, but at my level, believe me, I'm lucky to get three hundred a year. <laughs> yeah, I'm lucky they don't say, "Hey, we want some of that money back." So, but uh, uh, but anyway, how, how's life going with you? Good, good. I was thinking, yeah, we we're talking about some of the amazing people you've interviewed over the years, and uh, I always like to go to the negative. Can you? I always think of who are some of the worst interviews you've oh, had. Well, uh, Roseanne Cash, I think, was one we hated. Mar Ma Lori hated Roseanne Cash. I don't remember that one. She felt she was snotty. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. The actress. Is it the actress Roseanne Cash? Who? Which one's the actress? I guess it is, yeah. Yeah. Um she hasn't made movies in a long time now. But anyway, Mark, uh, uh, what, what do you call it? Laurie Thompson hated her. Just okay. hated her. Laurie well, didn't hate anyone. What, what do you feel are some of the worst interviews that we, we did? I mean, who, who, who can you remember that was... Well, there's one I, I don't remember, but I remember the, your producer was came in one morning and said that this, this guy was going to be on the following week, uh, and you said, oh, he's a terrible interview. <laughs> it was Wall. Some actor, Wallace Shawn. Oh, 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 Wally Shawn. Who you said you liked. I love, look, I love Wally Shawn in movies. I'm a fan of Wally Shawn's. Uh, I, when I first, the first time I ever heard that I was going to have him on the show, he said, oh, my, all means book Wally Shawn. And, of course, my producer said, who's Wally Shawn? Uh, but Wally Shawn is, uh, if you remember uh, uh, Manhattan, Woody Allen's Manhattan, she keeps talking about this boyfriend with this really butch name mm -hmm. that she went with and what a great lover he was and this was uh, you know the best lover she ever had and uh, it, it kept talking about this guy over and over Ke uh, Keaton kept talking about her, him over and over again and finally you meet him in the movie and he's this wimp you know which Wally Shawn is the ultimate movie wimp and he was in the Princess Bride. That's despicable, you know. That's a, 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 a inconceivable. I think was his great line. You remember Princess Bride? I've never seen. I keep people keep talking about that movie like it's some epic classic. I've never seen it. Yeah, it's a great film. Good little film. Really? Um, but anyway, uh, it, it uh, uh, Wally Shawn. Uh, so I wanted to have him on in the worst way, and he comes on. And he is just the worst possible interview. No, I'm not saying that this guy is a terrible guy or anything like that. He just was boring. Well, I don't know about that. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I mean, he was the Wally Sean from the movies. And I'm so I'm, I'm sitting there suffering. You know, because I can't really get a good conversation going with this guy, even though I know he's very intelligent, and he's you know he really he's really on the ball. So finally, after about ten minutes, I go, "Well, thank you so much, Wally, for having been here," because I figured I'd, I'll, I'd wrap it up. It's not going anywhere. And he, the next line out of his mouth was, "I wasn't good enough." Oh God. <laughs> And he does it with this pathetic Wally Shawn voice, you know. <laughs> and the last thing you want to do is to have somebody on your show who is feeling hurt by the fact that you've done something wrong, you know, because it makes you look bad. Yeah. So I kept him around for another 20 minutes. 
<laughs> another bad yeah. 20 minutes. And I guess the second time you mentioned is that somebody said you want Wally Shawn on the show, and I said, uh, worst interview yeah, I ever. Yeah, you recoiled in horror. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, and I loved Wally. I mean, a lovely person, wonderful person, sweet. Everything you expect Wally Shawn to be, except exciting. And uh, he was just, I mean, it was, it was, it was grueling for me, you know. The most grueling interview I ever did in my life was with Iggy Pop. You know, remember Iggy Pop? Uh, yeah, I don't remember the interview you did. No, this was in New York. Okay. And he comes in, I go, oh, we're going to have Iggy Pop on tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Iggy. And he goes, eh. Okay. And I go, uh, yeah, okay, well, no, how are you today, uh, Iggy? And he goes, uh. Eh. And for the whole hour, all I ever got out of this guy was, eh. Oh, man. Not even a word of English was spoken. Just grunts. This goes on for an hour. And I, the reason I did it for an hour was, after a while, that becomes funny. You know, it becomes hilarious. <laughs> and once you go past the pain of it all... It starts getting hilarious, and all he's doing is going, uh. And so finally, at the end of the interview, I said, Iggy, do you have anything to say besides, uh? And he belched. <laughs> and that was the interview with Iggy Pop. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but I, I turned that into a gem, a moment that I will always remember, because, you know, I called him on it, and he just belched. That's all. You know. And I went, okay. I remember David Cassidy was a weird interview because he would just, like, you would ask him a question and he'd go on these three-minute answers and he just... I don't remember. Did I have him on the... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. He's dead, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what you get for being on my show. You wind up dead. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of uh, somebody the other day who died who had been on my show. It was Ivana Trump. Do you remember Ivana? Okay, you had her? Wow. Yeah, yeah, I had her on the show. I thought, I thought it was on the phone, and then when I looked back on it, I think it was in the studio. Uh, and I remember her as being a very nice person, very decent person. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And... Um, uh, let me see here. Uh, who else? Uh, did you go with us to Vegas? Uh, no, I missed the flight, actually. I oh, caused you a big stir. Oh, oh, you missed the flight. Oh. It was May of, May of uh, 96. Yeah. That was the closest we ever had came to having Donald Trump on the show. He walked past our studio. Okay, that was the, uh, you guys were doing that from the stratosphere, right? Yeah, we were doing it from the stratosphere, and the guy who owned the place was giving Trump the tour. And uh, I figured, let's go grab Donald Trump. And then I went, ah, forget it. Who's <laughs> you don't want Donald Trump. But uh, wait a minute, I'm trying to think. Who else, who else do you remember is a terrible interview? Uh, sometimes there'd be, you would have certain comics, there were great comics, but some comics couldn't step out of their act, so they weren't really good in the moment, so they're kind of like not great interviews. Yeah, or? I'll tell you, um, uh, a guy I loved, I liked as a person, I think we all did. Long gone, died of AIDS, actually. It was Jim Samuels. Oh, the best, yeah. And I love Jim Samuels. Nice guy, sweet guy, terrific. I I couldn't book him on the show. I'd have him on. I had him on a couple of times, and he just didn't work on the show. You know, people didn't understand. They were... There were two requirements for being on my show. One is you're a funny comic. You know, you're a funny person. But the other thing is that that translates into being good on radio. Yeah, don't you, do your bits. Just don't do talk. your bits. Be conversational with me. And if, if a bit comes to mind while we're talking, then, you know, use your joke. But uh, I, I would rather you just fold right into the show. And uh, you did that perfectly. I mean, you know, uh, you still do. You know, yeah, that was fun. I, I don't think you're ever sitting on this program or on this program with me doing material. 
No, and uh, I will say when the, I've never felt more uncomfortable when I did the first Letterman show. They actually had, after you did your set, you sat down and talked to Letterman, and they just led you in a bit, but that was the, that's yeah. the most uncomfortable Yeah, I watched I've ever it. Felt. I, I saw it the other day. It's on oh, your, really? It's on, it's that on, was so uncomfortable. Anything, I, I decided to go look you up, okay? And I found your two Letterman shots, 20 years apart. Twenty-one. <laughs> well, the first one was in nineteen August fourth, eighty-seven. Eighty-seven, and the next one was July twenty-fifth, oh eight. Oh eight. So, see, twenty years, folks. Why? Well, he had to get enough material for another five <laughs> minutes. Anyway, um, I, so I, I watched both of them, and I watched the first one, and he did have you sit down. I know, horrible. He did have you sit down. And you were just doing one-liners. That was it. Well, I, the one thing is, Marjorie pointed it out, and I never realized it because I always thought of you as somebody that I would converse with and who was funny and, and fun to talk to. But I never really remembered your act per se. Mm-hmm. All right. And she pointed out uh, he just does one-liners, and I said, "Yeah, I guess he does." And you really—that is your act, right? Yeah, unfortunately. And uh... what do you mean, unfortunately? Uh, just, well, one-liners just—they're hard to remember them all, and it's uh, the funniest. The funniest takes actor. forever to fill time doing one-liners. You yeah, got to do five, six jokes a minute. And one of the funniest, uh, one of the funniest uh, people in comedy, it does nothing but one-liners, and that's Stephen Wright. Yeah, you know. I mean, and he's always had a. He, I read he always had a hard time remembering his. That's why he. He walks from one side of the stage to the other. He's trying to remember the next joke. Oh, okay. All right. You know, but, so your act's the hardest kind of act to do because you don't have... Yeah, and I, I read the same thing about Dangerfield. He was just, every time he did a show, he's freaking all day, listening to his cassette, trying to remember all these jokes. Cause he would do like 300 jokes in an hour. Because I noticed, this is strange, I noticed that on the first set you did on Letterman, some of those jokes were in the second set you did on Letterman. I uh, repeated one joke, yeah. Yeah. And and um, that, you know, when I looked at a lot of stuff that you did, even stuff that was done recently, there's something from the what, the theater over in Mill Valley uh, that I found. Uh, you're still using the same material you were using 20 years ago. But well, I think for Mill Valley, that's actually the audition that got me the Letterman shot. <laughs> the, the first, the second Letterman shot? The second one, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Because it, what's strange, it was another thing I thought about when you did the second Letterman shot, was you went back and said, okay, I'm ready, but the people who were there when you were there the first time weren't there anymore. Bob Morton wasn't the producer any longer. No, I didn't know anyone there. You didn't know anybody. So you had to kind of reintroduce yourself to them. Did right. they go back and look at your tape from the, from the first Letterman show? No, I didn't, and uh, I think... Uh I didn't know the first Letterman show I worked. I was so nervous, but I worked really, really slow, which is what I should have done. But uh, yeah, because when you work slow, they say that it looks like even if you're not confident, you look confident if you work slow. Jay Leno says if you're, he said go slow, and if you think you're going too slow, go even slower. Yeah, well, the thing is that I saw you on that show, and I went. Um, um, the thing about you that was terrific, uh, the audience reaction to you was really interesting. And I don't know if you ever noticed it, but you did, got bigger laughs with your pauses than you did with the actual joke. Oh, on the second one, yeah, I got the, they'd have these huge long delays, and then they just kept laughing. It was because weird. your face would go into this thing, you know, because on TV you're close, you're up close. And and so you work better on TV than I think you probably would even on a stage. But you stood. I, you st- I think you, com- low energy comics I think do work better on TV than the live. So. Yeah, but I mean I put you on. Uh, uh, I, I, put, I was watching you do it, and you would pause and look out at the audience, and they would then start applauding. You know, and uh, at one point, you, in fact, were so astonished by it, you said, thank you. Uh, really? Wow. I yeah, mean... yeah. You you looked astonished that they were laughing at you just sitting there, 
you know, <laughs> looking at the camera, looking at them. Wow. Uh, and so you, I suddenly realized that you have the kind of act where the audience is on your side. You know, uh, they look well at, when it works. They are, yeah. yeah. No, but I mean, they look at you as pathetic, <laughs> and they want they want you to succeed. You poor pathetic thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a fine line. You don't want them to feel pity for you, but the... and the closest that I can remember that somebody did what you were doing unconsciously by staring at the audience and giving that look between jokes was Benny, Jack Benny. Oh, wow, that's quite a compliment. Who, who would say a joke, right, and mm -hmm. then he would pause. And he would get a bigger laugh on the pause. A good example was years ago on radio, one of the most important bits that Benny ever did was being robbed in the middle of the night by somebody who says, your money or your life. And the guy was played by Sheldon Leonard, um, said again, uh, hey, bud, your money or your life? And the guy says it again. I said, your money or your life? And Benny pauses, okay, and the laugh is starting to come. The audience is starting to laugh because the pause is there. And he goes, I'm thinking it over. <laughs> well, Supposedly one of the longest laughs in the history of radio. It was, a, I think, a 45-second laugh wow. from the audience. Uh, and that was all based on pauses. It wasn't based the 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 uh, if he had just immediately said when he said your money your life and he goes I'm thinking it over everybody would just laughing on to the next joke. But yeah. it was the pauses that caused the laugh, the big laugh. Because when it finally came, it was so in in style for Benny, you know. Yeah, it worked. all the timing. Yeah. So I mean that's a pretty amazing. Uh, uh, what you were doing because it reminded me very much of what Benny did with his pauses and you didn't know you were doing it I didn't I, I've, and I haven't seen the second shot I've, only, I've listened to it but I never saw it you should, so uh, I, I wish I, should I, look at I, wish it I had a way of sending it to you but uh, well I, mean, I tell you to go on YouTube because it's there several times several, there's several different versions of it okay um, uh, is up there uh, and uh, you know it it, it it was, uh, I think it was masterful. I think it was absolutely masterful. Well, thank you. On the other hand, we could go back and... I can't find it anywhere. I have to go look for it, see if I can find it. Because oh, on YouTube, you can find almost anything you want. I can find my entire history on YouTube. And um, I find interviews I did on Channel 2, you know, things like that. But anyway, um, uh, the thing I... I wish I could find is Will Durst on Letterman. Uh, he never got a second shot. You can't find that one? I haven't looked for it, actually. It is maybe one of the worst um, uh, first shots anybody ever did on Letterman. Did you ever see it? I saw it. Uh, yeah, I did, yeah, because it was, I remember when it was. It was April of 85. Yeah. And I th and, yeah, but in Will's defense, a lot of comics bombed on that show. Then, well, in the Will's Letterman defense, show. he was only doing what the producer Bob Morton told him to do. Uh huh. He said, "I like that piece of material. I don't like that piece of material. I like that material. I don't like that piece of material." So what went on the air really wasn't Will's act; it was Bob Morton's idea of Will's act. And he went on and just bombed. I mean, there were no laughs. Nobody was laughing. And it, I felt really bad for him because I, I knew him to be a better comic than that. Yeah. But sometimes you don't work on, to, on that, in that kind of situation. You work perfectly. Your act was perfect for, for, uh, for TV and for Letterman. Yeah, but that is annoying that uh, you have to do the material they want. and uh, so. Yeah. What what happened after you were through with the second time? Did they say come back when you get a chance or what? Uh no, nothing. Uh, no comeback. I, I think I was too old, but. Uh, yeah. Well, also it was towards the end of his run, wasn't it? It was towards the end, and uh, I do remember after my set, the Letterman came over and said good night, and then the lights went down, and he started talking to me, and 
when I came off taking back the green room, the staff was going crazy. They said, oh, my God, he never talks to anyone. <laughs> oh, really? I felt, I felt honored, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's true. He never really did talk to anyone. But, uh, what, a, what a great story. Hey, listen, I just looked. We've run out of time for this episode of Life with Larry. It flies by. It just flies by when you have number one seventy nine in the can. Uh, no, this is no, this is one. Uh, this is one eighty one. One eighty. Okay. One eighty one. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Bye, Larry. Bye, bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its eighth year of talk, like you've never heard it before. And good old Larry Bubbles Brown and a new graphic, you know. Look, you see, we had a new graphic. Yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, it took me about five minutes to do that. Why I haven't done it before now, I, I have no idea, because you've been seeing the same ugly graphic for 170 episodes. <laughs> okay, but we got the new one, and uh, we're happy to say it's there. And hello, everybody. How are you? It doesn't look like there's anybody waiting out there except for Alan. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, if you want to call, you call. Ryan's not going to call tonight. He's got a birthday. He's got a birthday dinner for a friend. So, you know, but I noticed that Charlie is out there. Uh, at least he's been s sending some messages here and uh, whatever. Anyway, so uh, nothing much happening today, you know. Uh, all I know is that uh, to... Uh, uh, gripe my wife. Here's what I've been, I've been doing. Uh, I have been... Uh, I'm sick of MSNBC, okay? I'm just sick of them. Because I'm, I'm just so sick of, of the one-dimensional quality of the channel, you know? I mean, there are people with differing opinions, but they don't seem to be too terribly welcomed on MSNBC. Uh, now, I know that a lot of Republicans won't go on the show, Republican congressmen and senators, because uh, their, their uh, uh, people don't want them to do it. Okay, that I understand. But there are people who are not in Congress and not in the Senate uh, who have a differing view. Now, I, again, I'm not against, you know, I'm not, I don't agree with that differing view. But I'd like to hear it, you know. Makes for more exciting broadcasting. So I, I don't, I really don't understand it. Anyway, we don't even have any many people here waiting to come on tonight. But we'll, uh, we'll attempt to do it here. Let's see here. Uh, I just pushed admit all. There we go. And uh, the, the alls are coming on. There they are. There's Josh Wheeler. Hello, Josh. How are you this evening? Good. How are you doing? Fine. And you, Alan? I'm doing good. Thank you. How well, you you're the only two guys we got, so start talking. <laughs> <laughs> what to talk about? No, I don't know. Did you see the uh, thing last night, the, uh, the congressional hearings on... Um, yeah, I didn't see all the way to the end because uh, I had to go to sleep. But I saw I saw a good majority of it. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think? I've seen I've seen almost all of them. I haven't seen every minute of every single one, but I've probably seen eighty percent. Yeah, so that's pretty good. Okay. What did you think? Um, you know, I think they just you know wrapped it up. I guess I didn't hear too much of the witness testimony. I, some of the witness testimony they've had has been kind of sort of a waste of time. I mean, they could have just sort of presented that. Um, they don't really ask much like they do in some other uh, formats. But, I mean, overall, I mean, look, it's pretty clear what happened. And, you know, I don't really know what the consequences well, are going to be. I, them, but, uh, you know, you I know. wasn't surprised by anything that I heard. No. But, no, again... Yeah. It would have been nice to hear somebody, just somebody there to defend Trump. Why? Because they I just think to. they should have had somebody there to defend Trump. Yeah. Well, I mean, they've had their opportunity. Well, they to had do the so, opportunity. But, That's true. You know, okay. If none of them want to do it, then I <laughs> guess there's not a lot that can be done. Well, I haven't had any 
major, you know, issue with the uh, hearings or anything like that. Um, I don't particularly like how, like, the chairman uh, Thompson gives this. You know, I don't. I don't think he needs to talk for five mm-hmm. minutes before they do anything. I think he should just say we're in order and here we go. Yeah. I don't. I don't like that sort of. Uh, it almost to me seems opinion like, op-ed that he gives at the beginning. It there, it almost you know. seems oh. seems like an ego thing. You know, it comes mm-hmm. off that way. Yeah, uh, I mean, I just like to say I, I don't. I don't care for it. Um, I mean, it's not necessarily. Uh, no, it's not wrong. It's certainly not against the rules or anything. I'm just, you know, as a, as a preference, I, I would prefer that they they just presented the evidence and they didn't really provide that personal commentary. Um, you know, just me, but, you know. It, I also didn't like the fact that they were reading everything off a teleprompter. You know? Well, it's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's it's pretty scripted, you know. I mean, and for the most part, that's been And fine, if it's but... scripted, you get the feeling that, the verdict is in before they even present it. They present the, right. the, the stuff. See, my argument yeah, right. My argument yesterday was on the show that there are oh, a certain amount of people that hate Trump, okay? And there's a certain mm-hmm. amount of people that love Trump. But then there's a great bunch of people in the middle who don't feel either way and want to watch something and see what they think for themselves. And yeah. I don't think those people walked away feeling that it was a fair airing of this situation. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I I have seen some. I mean, polling, I think it was fair, and I know. think it was it was okay. Right. But yeah. but that but that I I'm I'm talking about the middle ground that, that, of the people that we have to convince. Right. You know. Do you disagree, well, Charlie? Well, yeah. I mean, there yeah. oh, there so, has been some polling yeah. that he's been he's been hurt decently um both within his own party and with uh within independence especially uh from what i've seen um college educated women mm-hmm. in the last you know wait a minute, wait, a minute, wait, a minute, wait a minute we're letting them go to college now apparently yeah oh okay all right charlie had they want to stop up. that <laughs> yeah charlie had his hand up about this did you do you agree with me that there's that whole middle ground that i think this didn't play to I don't know. Like like uh, John said, the polling has been showing that, that that Trump's been hurt by this. Yeah. Well, I mean, but I, it, like for instance, you and I are we either of us surprised by what we heard in the last couple? Oh of no. Weeks? Yeah. Not at all. I haven't heard anything that I didn't expect to hear. What that he was yeah. sitting in a dining room and just watching Fox to see the riot going on and not doing anything about it? Oh, surprise, right. surprise. I yeah. mean, there's been some, there's also been some polling that indicates that uh, the Republican Party overall has been hurt by it a little bit. Um, there's some decent polling recently that shows that their chances of, of gaining the majority in the Senate back have diminished quite quite a lot. Uh, you know, which I kind of believe. Um, well, you see, it shouldn't be. You know, okay, but, but it, it shouldn't be. But it's only because these jerks persist, literally persist, in in uh, idolizing Trump, saying that the 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 you know the election was rigged, which it clearly was not. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm always a skeptic about everything, and I'm sure Josh is, and I'm sure even Kevin is. But I don't think, and I know, uh, you know, I, I don't think any of you feel that, you know, he, he didn't win fair and square, you know. So, yeah, right. but you've got all these Republicans out there. Do you know, something like 190 candidates have been elected in primaries in this country, in Republican primaries, because they sided with the idea that the, the uh, election was stolen? Yeah. But, yep. but you know, I, I think the question remains to be seen if that works out well for them because who's electing these Republicans in these primaries? And it's basically just hardcore Republicans. Yeah, I mean, exactly, exactly. You know, where is that going to go in a, in a general election? I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know. We don't know yet. But all we have to go off of is polling that indicates so far mm-hmm. that it's not going to work out very well for them. Now, the congressional elections, you know, are obviously coming up here in November. 
-hmm. not very far away. So I think we're getting close enough to that that we can start to take a look at it. You know, obviously the next presidential election is very long way away. Um, so really no judgment can be made on that. But, right. you know, we'll see what happens for them. I mean, you know, look, I, I don't. I don't think that there's their their hardcore support for Trump in this January 6th thing is is going to work out as well as they thought it was. And that's probably, you know, I hope so. That's good news. I mean, that that should be the first small step in perhaps restoring some of the faith in the American democracy and the American electorate that many people, including a lot of people that call your program, had lost. Because if that turns out to be the case, that's, you know, that's good news. By the way, I was talking about MSNBC a second ago. And um, I, I t so to kind of get my wife's goat a little bit, uh, I, I, mean, I started watching Fox. Just on any TV set that I had on, I would have Fox on. <laughs> which, believe me, to suffer through that just to get even with your wife, you know, is not worth the trouble. All right. But... Uh, they, they, I'm watching them, and of course, it's like bizarro world over there. It's like everything's 100% the other way. All right. So uh, I, uh, um, I'm watching it, and they bring up something, and it was a good situ a case. They were talking about here in New York yesterday, I think it was, a Republican candidate for governor running in the primaries, who was campaigning. Uh, was attacked on stage by somebody who grabbed him and tried to stab him with a with a device it looked like brass knuckles with spikes on it and um, it was pretty terrible you know pretty terrible yeah it's and terrible that the guy's still alive no no see that's wrong that's I'm wrong. joking I, I'm well, sorry. well you know you don't sorry, joke, yes. you don't joke that way uh, anyway he um, turn your mic down a little bit will you just a oh, me? Bit. Yeah, yeah, it's a little too okay, hot. Okay, sure. Too hot. They were complaining that, well, you know, you go over to MSNBC and they're not even reporting this because it was a Republican that got attacked. And I went over to MSNBC to see, and no, they weren't. I asked Marjorie, I said, did you know this happened? And she went, no. I said, well, it did, you know. And finally, I was able to find it on a, you know, on a news clip on YouTube. Um, but she didn't know. And so she was kind of in the same world that a, that a Fox person gets into, in which all the news is aimed at what she wants to hear. And, you know, something like this, like, went through the cracks. They weren't reporting it on, on MSNBC. So, I heard it on KCBS. So you turn up your mic now. Now you're too low. I heard it on KCBS. Can you hear me at all? No, a little more. Okay, let me get the audio. Here we yeah, go. Yeah. Is this better? Uh, it's a little better. Sure. Not, not much. What? How about that? A little yeah. better. Okay, so I heard it on MSNBC. I wonder why this is a mess tonight. It's, you heard it on where? Yeah, on MSNBC. KCBS. KCBS. On KCBS locally yesterday. A afternoon. local San Francisco station, which actually... You know, it's a New York story, but they were reporting it in, in on uh, KCBS. See? Yeah, all I listen to is KCBS News Talk. Yeah, uh, 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 well, it's not KCBS News Talk. They don't do news talk. They do news. No, just news. They just do news. Just news. Just news. Yeah. yeah okay. Whatever. Yeah. But they the news you got to talk. So to me, it's news talk. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Hey, you always news but cool. but you know, it, it, it's a perfect example of where she ensconces herself in this world and it, she gets whatever news there and the spin they're going to put on it boy i quit watching it i mean i yeah if i if i go from if i want to go to fox i'll watch fox stuff and get my republican side then i'll go to msnbc for a few minutes but i have not turned on msnbc for more than about three minutes in the last five months I, I, I can't I watch, watch it, it all the time. It drives me crazy. I don't watch I it at all. I used to watch it all the time, and I, I just didn't. I just don't do it anymore because CNN gives you both sides. Yep. I yeah. As much CNN. as they can get a little bit cocky on one side, they still give you both sides. Well, CNN has a new policy. They don't want their uh, their news people to be opinionated. 
Well, they are, you know, to a point, but they don't they don't go out of their way to do it. Yeah. You know, they're all going to be that way, but but they it, also, you know what they've done that over at CNN if you look closely, no more breaking news. Really? They've done a, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. They I say, they CNN say they've the done time. away. They said the other day they were doing away with the breaking news thing. Yeah, well, it's still there. Is it? Really? Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, lying cocks. They all break wind. <laughs> yeah. All the time. Uh, I mean, but that's that'll never go away. Yeah, that's that's where the news channels are at, you know. So I don't I don't put a lot into them. I I really don't watch them either. I mean, you know, minor, very minor time I would spend on those. I would find yeah. my news through reading and things like that, you know. But I mean. It's, you know, the same way. I mean, I I constantly hear these things about this, you know, Fox News. They, I mean, it, they still to this day, I mean, daily, as far as I know, they hit away at this, you know, like Hunter Biden's laptop thing or whatever. And as if as if there's as if like all of us as, as leftists or liberals or Democrats or, 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 you know, against he can't go to jail or whatever. And like I've said before, OK, then if he broke the fucking law, then. Prosecute him and put him in jail. I don't yeah. care if he's Joe Biden's son. And yeah. if you find some tape of Joe Biden t- helping him break the law, then impeach his ass and get him out of there. I mean, what, you know, yeah, you don't have don't. to play the Trump game. I mean, then get rid of him. I don't care. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Let's just, it's it's the Hunter Biden and, and Don Jr. and all that. God, can we just yeah, ask for and demand integrity amongst you know, politicians. Well, no. Can we media? ask that you report over that it. you report the news? I think that's probably the what we're asking here. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, Alan. Uh, I'm I'm looking at CNN breaking news right now, and that they're the big headline is Secret Service identifies phones with potential missing text messages. So they still are doing breaking news. Yeah, but you're looking at the phone. I think we we're talking about the TV when they come on and say break. No, we're, yeah, we're, I, I watch the TV at night. Yeah, but I, you're 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 reading the web page, yes. notifications yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 but they're yeah. still doing the headline the headline breaking news on, on really? CNN. I know mm-hmm. that for a fact. Because that you know but, that was the other uh, thing was getting to me because this, it really cheapened what breaking news is, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Usually it's something happening right now, but it's usually. Every other commercial, it's breaking news, and it gets irritating. Yeah. You seem, well, to, you seem yeah, to agree. Fine. You seem to agree with this, Charlie. I mean, are you getting a little tired yeah. of MSNBC, for instance? Well, I mean, you know, how much breaking news can you have? I mean, yeah. <laughs> every yeah. every story is breaking news to them. Yeah, but I mean, how about MSNBC always taking the side that you're on, and it should make you feel good. But I don't feel that good about it. I feel like I'm being pandered to. If you go to hey, Fox really. News every hour for five days, breaking news is Biden falling off the bicycle. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know what they did here? It's, it's strange. Uh, the worst of all the channels when it comes to misinformation is One America News. OAN. Really? Oh, yeah. By oh, far. Wow. I don't get it. They have been listed as just the worst. Well, I got a thing from uh, Fios today that as of the 31st of the month, they're no longer going to be carrying One America News. Which I'm going, oh, hey, that's great. And they go, because we couldn't come to an agreement on carriage fees. Right. (laughs) And I'm thinking... You didn't think about getting rid of them just because everything they have on there is known to be a goddamn lie? It sounds like dredge, you know, the mm-hmm. dredge, dredge or whatever the thing that Phil listens to. Well, they got rid of, um, they got rid of, uh, what's his name, Glenn Beck. They had a channel with Glenn Beck on it, mm-hmm. and they got rid of yeah. it. Be- again, I think because they came up with carriage problems, but... Uh, I, I kind of liked watching Glenn Beck because at least at times he was funny, you know. And if he was still mistaken in everything he said, I I uh, I would prefer to watch him say than any mm-hmm. of those other wonks like Hannity or Tucker Carlson. Um, yeah, I, I 
how anyone could watch that kind of stuff every night and then consider themselves informed I, on either side, I, I don't know. I mean, Well, you're getting a whole yeah. passel of misinformation. There's no question about it. You know. I mean, I just read, you know, a newspaper or two, you know, and, uh, you know, I have subscriptions and I mean, you know, people don't like that or whatever because of their, they, oh, they left lean or whatever. I mean, come on, it's a newspaper, you know what I'm saying? They, you just read it. I mean, and you know, look, I say it all the time and I've said it before. I, I just turn C-SPAN on and they say what they say and then I heard it and there you go. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, I, mean I, I turn it on when I'm working and doing research yeah the only the, problem with c-span is times, you know they're c-span is so goddamn boring well you know but i mean i, I you know they they're not the, doing the only thing on, on c the only thing on c-span worth watching is when they have the people call up and make comments that's their commentary yeah that and, gets and more the fact that but... somebody will come up with like the most harebrained yeah thing they want to say and they say it and because the host can't comment on it or anything else it's always well thank you so much for calling we really yeah, appreciate they just, your call people say and what the they fact have to that say you, and they, the fact that you hate black people yeah goodbye <laughs> go to the next uh go on to the next i mean you know but i mean they have guests on who represent a certain side and then as soon as that guest is over they have another guest on who will give you another point of view or whatever and you know they will take calls and, and all that i mean and they just they just disseminate information look um, i i know what points about of view, your government yeah you know? i I, look, I know what points of view i don't agree with okay and that's fine uh yeah. but i don't just because i i i have an opinion doesn't mean i want to be pandered to and played to my opinion all the time you know, and everybody, well, without question, on MSNBC is always trying to play to the to the left leaning liberal. Uh, and actually, they're more liberal than they are left leaning. If they were left leaning, they'd be a little more radical in their opinions. Yeah. You know. Well, you I mean, it's look, it's no, it's it's to make money. I mean, I think we're all aware yeah. of that, right? Yeah. It's to make money. Charlie, <laughs> Charlie, where do you get your news? I used to do it online or, uh, you know, there's a couple of shows I listen to. I know you don't like the Young Turks, but I, I get my news from them. Well, I don't like the Young Turks because I find, what's his name? I can't remember his name now. Just Jank Uger, One yeah. of the biggest assholes I've ever met in my life. I mean, just terrible. <laughs> just terrible. You know, um, I, I it's Sirius XM, because they had, were on Sirius XM at one time. Uh, I had to host, I think it was election night coverage with him. And I couldn't get a word in edgewise. He was like hogging oh, right. the whole thing. He didn't know how to He's, work well yeah. with others. He was just one of the most uh, unrelenting jerks that I've had to deal with. Yeah. You know. Well, I mean, but those are the kinds of, the, but those are the kinds of programs that I don't, they're not going to give you like a, Oh, you're they're not going to give you. Yeah. They're not going to give you an unbiased view. I mean, you yeah, know, right. they have. Yeah, their he admits team. he's biased. Yeah, right. I mean, which is fine. I mean, you know, I mean, that's, you know, there are plenty of people host those sorts of programs and podcasts and things like that. I mean, so it's you know, it's it's fine as long as you understand what. Well, it is, you know, the young turks, you you have to uh, either seek out or subscribe to. I don't know what their model is these days, <clears throat> and. Um, uh, so if you're paying for something and you want to hear that, then you should get your money's worth. Okay. I mean, that's the, you know, you have that freedom. I mean, you know, and that right yeah. and to entertain yourself or inform yourself. Yeah. However you see fit, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, yeah. you know, it's, it's, I don't think it's necessarily informative, but I mean, you know, but other, others would, would disagree. So I get that, but. I mean, there's there's not a lot out there that you can really go to, you know, honestly anymore. I mean, everything is geared toward a market, you know, and it's to make money. And then, you know, the market is identified and it's researched mm -hmm. and it's it's uh, it's used to shape and mold programming. And it's really no different than, you know, uh, yeah. making movies or whatever. I mean, they're right there. Make movies that people will 
they think are going to want to watch. You well, know, I, 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 mean, I talked to a friend of mine um, last night who I hadn't talked to in a while. And he happened to have been the former governor of the state of New York. Uh, and um, uh, you bring him on the show, huh? Yeah, we're going to Come um, on the show. Uh, but anyway, I I had him on the program, and I mean I was talking with him, and he he said, well, since we talked last, he said, hasn't the world just gotten weird? He <laughs> said it's just untenable out there. You know, and uh, <laughs> you know uh, David Patterson, by the way, is the, the governor's name. Uh, he's the guy that took over from uh, the guy who, uh, client number nine. Uh, In a wheelchair, he's blind or something. Well, like he that. he was in, he was blind. He's blind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he has a certain amount of he can see a little bit, but he, he's he's legally blind. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, a great guy, I think the world of. But he he's going to come over. We're going to do a thing with him, because he he and I got into a quick discussion about it about how just everything was. He says it's not like when we were kids and when you were a radical, you actually took action. He said now you just go to a rally and then you go home, you know, and it ends there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. it it it. Um, it, it's just, I mean, we do not live in the w world that I signed up for or that I, we, I don't even live in the America I was promised, you know? I mean, yeah. all this contentiousness and everything is just more than I, I can take. And I don't know about you bad guys, but it's uh, never seemed wonderful to me, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I don't... Uh... I don't like it at all, which is one of the reasons I don't watch those cable programs because they are, they're in business to keep that division going. But how because, long, yeah, how long can you know, this country survive with this kind of mentality going on? You know? Well, I think it'll survive indefinitely. I mean, it's, it's oh, already survived I, far worse division than that. No, I don't think so. Uh, 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 I, uh, I think quite frankly that, uh, nah, no, I think we're in I trouble. Know. This, I think this we're might be selfish, trouble. but I think we're lucky that we're all in the last third of our life. And we I think so. And we won't have to put up yeah. with it for very yeah. long. I yeah. mean, I mean yep. it, there's a certain sick part of me that would like to live to be another 100 years so I could see where this thing goes. But I think in another 100 years, the America that's here uh, now won't be recognizable. You know? I think that it, I think we're going to see a civil war. I think that's going to happen, you know, of one sort or another. Uh, and Especially if Trump gets reelected. Well, forget about it. Trump ain't going to get reelected, okay? The only one in America who actually believes that is Donald Trump. And I don't even think he believes And it. Phil Meyer. And Phil Meyer. And Phil Meyer. No, I think Phil doesn't necessarily think he will either. But I he don't wants... think Biden's reelectable. Okay, no, I agree. I agree. So I mean, uh, and and in fact, Biden would be doing the Democrats a great favor if he didn't run. Yep. Well, in the news a couple of days ago, Kamala Harris and uh, whatever the governor's name is in California are looking into, you know, certain fundraising in case Biden doesn't want I to run. I can't. I can't see Biden Gavin. wanting to run. Okay. I mean, for the good of the party, the guy's going to be what? Eighty-one years old, eighty-two years old. If I know he... that's near death. Shit. It's stop. Uh, hey, hey, hey! Hey! Watch it! Watch it! Watch it! Um, it's... He's, he's all ready to be uh, to be on Gabnet. That's who the president. Oh, Biden. Yeah. Biden. Yeah. yeah. Can him do commentary on Gabnet. Right. Well, I mean, I think it's too early to gauge his, you know, his Yeah, but I mean, what's, what's the practicality of him running and winning? Well, have you seen him lately? I mean, I hate to say this, and, and I don't know if I come off this way, but at in 79 years of age he is, he's coming off as doddering, you know? I mean, you see him walk. I mean, come on, I've got yeah. neuropathy and I walk better than that. Not everybody ages the same way. I mean, look at you. You're in pretty good health. Well, it's only because you see me sitting down all the time. 
<laughs> yeah. And well, you walk through the park sometimes. We see. Yeah, we get to see that. Yeah, I haven't done it lately. And but by the way, I'm not going to do it right now because the heat is just unrelenting. How's it doing Knocking up in Canada? You out. Knocking you out. Yeah, it's hot here the too. Temperature. Yeah, yeah. And I got a swimming pool that I can go to. Yeah. And hey, I want to ask you a question. So I'm watching a, a movie tonight called uh, I can't remember now. But anyway, I'm watching a movie tonight, and uh, this girl in it has a, a pacemaker. And it's and it's a it's a action picture, and they've <laughs> got to jump out of the window into a moat, and she winds up underwater. Uh, pacemakers work underwater, don't they? Sure. Oh, sure. okay. All right. That, I just wanted to ask you because yeah. I didn't know, you know, <laughs> what they're the, working. They're working in blood, Alex. Yeah. You're right. You're right. I didn't stop to think about that, but you know, all I know is that it's also run by electricity which sometimes can be shorted out by water. Okay. Well, you know, I, this is my second one, on, because the one on the, this side got infected. I was going to say, if it was all you might, it might have said, I didn't make the payments on the other one. Yeah. So anyway, they put it on the other side. Really? With new wires. It doesn't have to be on the same side as your heart. Well, your heart really is. Your heart technically isn't on a side. It's almost in the center of your well, little center, yeah, right about, about, about here. Right? It's still on this side. Yeah. So what, what side are they controlling, the right side or the left side, Jeff? Well, you, your pacemaker for right. everybody is Okay, typical. so you have to, this is not a uh, like an automatic defibrillator. This is a real pacemaker that- It's a pacemaker. That's the yeah. Well, yeah. Some of them are like defibrillators. Yes, yeah. so that's something different. Okay. Yeah. So some people do wear. I can't believe how long they last. Really? Yeah. Yeah. How long have you had this one? It seems like about fifteen years. It's time to develop a new one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this though. It, it, it runs by electricity. Do you have to charge it? Yes. No. No. Uh, how long do the batteries last? Do you have to replace the batteries? Well, eventually, yes. But at that point, you don't take the battery out. You take the whole thing out. Yeah. You figure out. You may as well have a, a whole new system. Right. But it doesn't have to, it also doesn't have to work all the time, right? It only works when your heart needs the... the Depends the, upon the patient, and, you know, yeah. what their needs are. And, and, yeah. You know, minds kind of work by themselves. Now, now, yeah. Kevin, you've had something. Do you still have it, that thing they put in you? Uh, sure as hell didn't take it out. Oh, okay, well. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so my question is, how's that going for you? Fine. This was, now explain what it was. It was a, something to relieve you of the, the pain. spinal cord stimulator. Ah, okay. And I got to have the battery changed in five, five or six years, I think. Oh, that's a long time. Yeah. yeah. And how big is the battery? Oh, it's about like a eight, uh, you know, car it's battery. It's probably battery. a little button battery, but they take the whole thing out and then shove a new one in. Oh, wow. Mm. They do it under the skin? Yeah. yeah. It's implanted in my back. Right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So I, was, I was talking to a friend of ours last night, or the night before last, and she's had a pacemaker since she was like three, and she's had nine of them. Wow. Oh. And she hasn't put in a new battery put in about every seven years, and she was due to have one put in, I guess, in September. Do they actually have to go, go inside, or can they do it? Yeah, they go inside, change the whole thing out, because the battery's in it. They just change the whole unit out. Can they do it laparoscopically, or do they have to do it? Uh, they go in and do it. They have to crack the chest there. A little cut. Yeah, they no, just they... do an incision, pull it out, put it yeah. back in. Yeah. No, they don't crack it. <clears throat> oh, good. Well, you know, if it keeps you alive, it keeps you alive. You know? Kept her alive since she was three years old. Yeah, mm. yeah. <clears throat> oh, here's a pacemaker. That's not, that's, that's not the one you have in you. No, it's 
an old. Yeah, he went to the bathroom and Let's took see it, it out. Hold it up oh. to the camera again. Up, up. We can't higher see up. it. Higher up. Higher up towards oh. the camera. See the higher torture? up. That, that's the camera oh. where the camera is. See the camera eye? Yeah, by your nose. There you, there you go. go. Oh. <clears throat> okay. And that goes inside of you. It goes in the chest. Yeah, typically that one came, it was on that side. Okay. Is there anything outside at all? Well, this is connected to a cable wire, if you yeah. want to call it that. A really long one. <laughs> well, it depends upon how far you are. <laughs> but, uh, it, so was that one of the ones you developed, Jeff? Uh, no. This one uh, was actually mine. Oh, wow. And uh, <clears throat> what happened was I had, I had this infection. And so they took it out. And I said, could I have it? He said, yeah, take it. Like pericarditis or something like that? No, no. You're talking about an entirely different thing there. Pericarditis mm -hmm. is a heart problem. A heart no. infection. Yeah, but I, I but think there's I, some I, other devices that no, I. But wait a minute! The infection wasn't a heart infection, was it? It was a just an infection. Period. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. but there's a little uh, mesh that's on one side of the of the heart. That's mm -hmm. just kind of like a mesh, and it prevents clots and things like that. Yeah. Like a filter. Yeah. So I worked on that one. <clears throat> yeah. Cool. Well, you know, it's, and I have one. it's amazing what we're doing today, scientifically, oh, yeah. to keep people going. I mean, look at what we did to uh, uh, Kevin here. I mean, are you happy with the thing they put in you? I mean, is it, has it helped? Yeah. Yeah. What has it done? Relieve pain? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, good. You know. Cut my meds in half. Now, there was no way we could save Charlie's toes. No. Nope. Um, however, You're the day may it. come when, you know, diabetes is uh, curable, you know? Or, or transplant toes. Well, I guess they could transplant toes anyway, yeah. but I don't think it was offered, was it, Charlie? No. No. So, mm -hmm. anyway. Uh, but you had, you had diabetes pretty bad, right? Well, yeah, I've had it for almost twenty years. Yeah, are you t are you taking insulin and stuff? No, I, I I don't take insulin. Did you, what? What'd you do? Just alter your diet? I altered my diet and I take metformin. It's worked. It keeps my uh, A one C below six. So. Oh, that's great. What is an A one C? I see it on all the ads on the newscasts. An average. It helped my A one C. It's a it's a. Uh... A snapshot of two to three months of your highs and lows in your blood sugar. Oh, okay. All yep. right. Instead okay. of like the, you know, where they tell you to fast the night before and they take your blood sugar, that's a one day picture yeah. of it. But this takes it, you don't need to fast. It just. Well, you, uh, you Charlie, you, you also out. probably altered your diet, right? You know, you're watching. Quite a bit. You, you, no, mm -hmm. uh, wow. no carbs, right? Uh, well, I cut out all, uh, pretty much all the sodas. I, 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 limit, I used to drink about 10 Dr. Peppers a day. Oh, my God. drink one. Well, that's how I got the diabetes, is doing that. From yeah. Diet Pepper? <laughs> Dr. Pepper? Dr. Do Dr. Pepper. No, I don't drink And it's diet. named after a doctor. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, he was a doctor. I very early on, I started, I, as far back as I can remember, have been doing diet sodas. And now I'm on to this, uh, this ice um, huh. flavored seltzer that has no calories in it, no sugar. Yeah. Is and, it good? It, huh? Oh, it's great. Yeah. Oh, I love good. it. I like it better than uh, I was doing. I used to do Diet Coke all the time. And uh, I like this mm -hmm. because it has no caffeine in it. All right. You know? And uh, it, uh, it, you know, I don't have to worry about my. Uh, uh, my carbs, right? I'll get them eating potato chips instead. You know. So, well, I mean, you know, you, you can, Charlie got <clears throat> diabetes by drinking sodas and eating a lot of carbs. Blacks are like two or three times higher 
chance of becoming diabetic than anybody else. Is it Caucasian Why is that? Is there is, anybody know what that reason is? I don't know. I think it's diet. <laughs> You eat a bunch of sugary stuff, and yeah, but I eat a bunch of sugary stuff. I didn't get to three hundred pounds by not eating you, sugar. But, well, what I'm saying, do you think it's social? Then it's socially caused. I I don't know. They don't I, have a you know they don't have. I don't know. Maybe kind, Charlie does. Well, part of part of it's uh, genetic too, because both of my parents have diabetes, and and then both of my grandparents on my mother's side had diabetes. Yeah, that makes a difference. Well, here comes your <laughs> here comes your diabetic pal, mm. Jack Bishop. Uh, who, uh, is... so, but, but my A1C is 5.5, Charlie. Mine's 5.8. <laughs> That's great. I mean, I'm, I, you know, 5.5 is not even considered pre-diabetic. I have no idea yeah. what mine is. Uh, Jack? Right here, right here. You're the other, di time? you're, you're the I other diabetic here, right? Yeah, and, and I, I want to point out something that most people don't know. Yeah. Diabetes is a custom disease not necessarily the same things work for everybody right yep. yeah uh, and and that's one of the one of the screwy things you know uh, charlie was uh diagnosed later than i was and yet he has had uh more uh, i don't want to use the current uh, more serious damage than i've had right and uh he he gets by with metform. I took metform for, gee, uh, eight nine years. Didn't do squat for me. It wasn't until I got on some form of injectable that I started having good control. And now I'm about a, you know, when I get my hemoglobin. Well, it's like with points. me. When I I had this problem being tired all the time, which I have, and <laughs> the thing that I found that cured it was cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, everybody tells me at my weight and my age, you need to be careful of diabetes. And I mean, it could happen any time, but I, I've been heavy for the past 15 years. Well, look, uh, it, well, how do you And I'm not even Kev, pre-diabetic. Kev, Kevin, you're a big guy. Have you ever had any problem with diabetes? They've always played with it, but they also say that my infection caused a bunch of shit that make it look like diabetes oh okay all right mm -hmm. yeah i had an uncle that never weighed more than 180 pounds in his life and by the time he was 60 he was a diabetic well i mean charlie i'm sure is half the size of me you know yeah i um, have no sign of diabetes I have, I have no sign of diabetes at all well here's the yeah. thing to remember if you're african-american which i am Latino, which i am so well, yes, because you're a black man. Well, we no, my name is Schwarzman. That means black I'm, man. I, I see. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're African American, if you're uh, Latino, if you're Native American, your chances of being a diabetic are greatly increased. Hmm. And, and then uh, Charlie's case, he has parents that were diabetic. Yeah. And hereditary is a big but, thing. Well, her, her, hereditary is the. Is. The the, the, uh, the way it runs as far as heredity, if your grandfather was a diabetic, if you had an uncle who was a diabetic, your chances shoot up immensely. God was a racist. So I heard. Uh, <laughs> so I heard uh, Bannon got nailed today, huh? Yeah. 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 Oh, that's they right. Yeah. yeah, he may get as much as a month in jail. A month? Oh. Yeah. I, I mean, don't know. They found him guilty on both of them. Yeah, but yeah. It, it's not the kind. It's it, to begin with. This the, nobody is bitten, found guilty of this in like forty years. Really? Okay. So it's very rare, and it's not like you know. It's not like you went out and robbed somebody. He just refused to testify before Congress. So, hmm. you know, they'll probably. Yeah, but he refused to show up to court. Right. Yeah. He yes. could have. He could have taken the Fifth Amendment in court. You know, he, the the right of. He laughed at the whole thing. He didn't, right. he didn't. Yeah. He didn't present a, a a defense. That's right. You know. Nothing. Uh, I think yeah, he, he laughed at the whole thing. I, I, I think he. I think he actually wanted to go to jail. I think he wanted. To, no, it's a. Well, fun, I think a lot of people and, wanted him to go to jail. No, as a school. fundraising thing for him. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, he what what is. 
what's his he lives off a reputation uh to other people who probably should be in jail uh and he uh he he likes that reputation just like roger stone did roger stone loved being notorious and uh the only reason he never went to jail was the same reason i think that uh bannon didn't uh was because he got a pardon from trump but he didn't get yeah. a pardon from anything after the day that trump gave him a pardon and this thing mm -hmm. happened after trump gave him a pardon yeah so if the Republicans take over in 2024, whatever people go to jail because of the January 6th, they'll probably pardon them all. Well, the thing is, I think um, Biden would have to pardon them. Yeah, you know, I said 2024. If the Republicans, oh, tw take yeah, over. If yeah, 20 yeah, right. yeah, right. Well, Biden's not going to pardon anybody, not not yeah. anybody that's any connection to January. Well, they won't have to pardon Bannon. Well, they could pardon him retroactively. So that it doesn't go on his record, you know. Uh, oh. But this is a misdemeanor, you know. He, how long are they going to throw him in jail for? Well, I'd be surprised if he gets more than a month. Really, I'm serious. Yeah, but then he's got a criminal record for the rest of his life. No, it's a misdemeanor. Well, in California, if you get convicted of a misdemeanor, you have a criminal record. Well, for the then rest if you get a traffic ticket, that's an infraction. That's different. <laughs> Well, well it, depends on, it depends on the state. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Where was he tried again? He was tried in uh, New York. Was it Washington? I think Washington. Yeah, I think it's Washington. Washington. Yeah, Washington. Washington. Yeah. Virginia. Yeah. Would have to be. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, how, how much time do you think he's going to get, Josh? Do you have any idea? No, I really don't know. There's not really a comparable case or anything uh i mean he could get none i believe if they choose to but it's it's like uh if you impose jail time i believe it's a minimum of 30 days and a max of a year for each count so he could get you know two months two to 24 months you know so i think the judge has the right maybe to not impose uh jail and just go with other um forms of punishment but uh i mean i i I don't think it's proper, you know, what he did and for people to do that. So I would like to see him get some jail time. I would be I'm, fine with I'm him getting a punishment, him. you know, whatever. Yeah. There's a few other people on the list to be prosecuted for this, including, yeah. I believe, Roger Stone. Navarro. So Navarro. this is not a good sign for them. The Peter you know? Navarro. Yeah, I believe yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. he's, he's um, the next so, he's the next on trial. Yeah, right. So this is, you know, that's not a good uh, that's not a good sign for them. Um, especially if he gets uh, jail time, um, you know, and I'd be fine with that. But look, you know, when you're subpoenaed to appear before a court or a committee, well, you could go before a committee and say, you "Do it." I mean, you know. say, "I refuse to testify about that yes. because blah Stop. blah blah," and right. but you showed up. Yeah. You know, right. and what happened mm -hmm. with Bannon is he didn't even show up. No. That's how he ended up with contempt of Congress. Yeah. If he you know, the others haven't either. So, I mean, I honestly think that I think the punishment should be as severe as they can get it because this has been the problem with congressional investigations over the last, you know, yep. decade or so is every time they have one, the people just say, oh, it's politically motivated and I'm not going to go because it's a sham and all that. And they don't go and no one's ever done anything about it. So it's probably maybe if we start actually doing something about it and we actually start do? telling people, fine. They you don't have to show up and it. testify. If, if you'd rather go to prison for two years, prison's right over there. You know, you can yeah. start today if you want. Where, let's, let's do it. That what way. would you suggest would be a, a a punishment other than jail? I mean, I think the only it's. I'm sure it's my. I think probably having to yeah. stay at Mar-a-Lago. Yeah. Well, being banned from rubber chicken. Well, I'd love to see him picking up garbage racing. on the freeway. It'd be great. You could aim your car at him. <laughs> yeah, baby. I'll pay for the gas. We'll use your truck, Kevin. Yeah. I mean, they they should impose, you know, punishment. I, I don't care who refuses. I agree. To I think they should throw the book at them and make an example at them. So well, nobody if the yeah. argument was that if the power of subpoena doesn't work for the Congress, then the Congress cannot hold these hearings. 
Correct. You know, I mean, they need to be able to have the ability to subpoena people, even if those people, I mean, several of the people who were subpoenaed, who, who testified, they showed them testifying, and they were just refusing to answer any of the questions. You okay. have the right to do that. Yes. Yes, you, you know, do. you just don't have yeah, the right. In not certain to show cases, up. you do. You know, some of them were uh, probably flaunting the legality of the subpoena by refusing to answer certain questions because you're only allowed to refuse to answer questions under certain conditions. And I think some of them were operating outside those conditions, and they may, they may still yet pursue that. Mm -hmm. But you know, at the but at the very base of it, people refusing to testify before congressional committees has been an ongoing problem now for at least a decade, really longer, but it's gotten really bad the last couple administrations, and it's time for it to stop. I mean, and if look, if they, these, these they can put some Democrat in jail for this, like I said earlier a couple yeah. of years from now. I don't yeah. care. That's fine. It's a perfect opportunity to set examples. Yes. These, people are, these people are protected against self-incrimination. And so... They could answer, if they showed up to court, they could answer generalized questions that wouldn't incriminate them in any, any crime. Well, they, they can. They can from well, the Ciparino very... Well, was doing, the, doing that. He was claiming privilege all through his testimony. Yeah, well, he doesn't have... Yeah, but he privilege. was questioning. When he would answer a question, he would look over at his lawyer and say, can I answer that? Correct, but there was many yeah. questions that he did answer, and there were right. certain things that he didn't, obviously. Well, at the That's time a... that they're asking him about this stuff, he was working with the president. And so, right. therefore, yeah. he could right. say privilege. You know, executive privilege on, right. on those. And, and there and, was another one that was uh, being questioned. Uh, who was it? He kept claiming fifth. Uh, who was it? There was I some, can't remember There who was, was somebody who was claiming the fifth over and he, over and over. He and just over. turned around and said fifth, 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 fifth. Right. Yeah. But he was there. Isn't it? Is yeah. it if I got it wrong, anybody, nobody's a lawyer here. But if you answer just one question without, uh, uh, we lost Jack, uh, without without uh, claiming um, the fifth, and you answer one question, then you have to answer all the rest of them? No, I don't think so. Or you can I go think, back to that as a fifth thing. I think as regard to, as regard to maybe, uh, like topic, I believe. Now, I don't know the exact specifics on it, but I think in in regard to like a, a subject matter for you know example we'll just like really dumb it down i i think that you know if you plead the fifth on questions about apples you can answer questions about oranges you know but not apples i mean oh, okay you know but so you, but you can continue to plead the fifth on every question they have uh yeah you can in certain in if the question is deemed to have some sort of possibility to incriminate you, yeah. You know, but I mean, there are certain people who do have to testify to their knowledge of something if it's their knowledge of something that does not incriminate them. But it, we, we see people sometimes refuse to do that, such as Bannon. So he didn't even show up and do it. And, you know, to I mean, me, that's a violation of the subpoena. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I it it didn't work out so well for Kennedy when he uh, had uh, uh, Jimmy Hoffa there. He just kept taking the Fifth Amendment. He wouldn't answer anything mm -hmm. until they started going after him personally. Then he got pissed. How dare you call me a thief? How dare you call me a liar? That type of thing. Yeah, but he has the right to do that. Absolutely, has mm -hmm. absolutely the right to do that. Yeah, I mean, but. You know, if, if we're going to really have congressional investigations and they're going to go back to not being complete jokes, then the only way we're going to do that is if they have power behind them and okay. if they have consequences. So consequences. it's time, you know. So to me, if this judge does not impose some sort of confinement, then I think that's monetary punishment would be that's okay stupid that's by the not way you know what's interesting what's interesting i forgot to bring it up about this guy who attacked the guy running for lieutenant for governor on the trying to get the you know the uh, win the primary uh, mm -hmm. for governor uh, the guy attacked him and was arrested and he was then released without bail 
He was yeah. released by Zoom. Huh? He was released to OR. Huh? Yeah. What'd you yeah, say? he was, like like Kevin said, OR. On his own recognizance. Right. Now, he attacked yeah, they, somebody. He attacked somebody with a weapon. I don't like it. Yeah, but, you know, I mean... And he doesn't have to, uh, like, uh, you know... Uh, Pay he doesn't a, get incarcerated until his trial. He doesn't have to pay bail. What? What's no. with that? California. Yeah. California. In California. Oh, I get. I know. It was. It was okay. He attacked a Republican. I'm right. Sorry. In California, it's called sight and release. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's happening a lot in California, isn't it? I mean, down in L.A., the L.A. District Attorney, they're trying to get rid of him because he just doesn't throw anybody in jail. Yes, go. Well, he was the DA in San Francisco, and he was worthless too. Oh, was that the guy that they threw out of San Francisco because yeah. he, he was he he just said, "I'm just not I'm not going to put anybody out on bail." Well, that wasn't this recent guy that got oh, that got that was another out, one. But yeah, that was before that. Yeah, yeah George Gascon. He was See, actually. I, I don't. I I have to agree with him on a certain level. Is that I don't think that bail is a great idea. Because it's many times used as a punishment where it shouldn't be. It should only be used as a guarantee that you will show up in court. Right. And if you're a multi-millionaire, a billionaire, and they put you on a million dollars bail, you could skip bail and not even care about it. But believe yeah, the, the me, bail believe, system sucks. believe me, yeah. if you're a if you're a uh, just the average Joe and they even charge you a hundred thousand dollar bail, you can't come up with it. You know, so it's, I, it's it's non-equitable. If I stole the candy bar just about anywhere, including California, and Charlie stole the candy bar, he's going to get a much higher bail than I am. Really? Yeah. Yeah. In California, especially, but uh, because it's racial. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I've often often felt that a bail should not be a penalty. Bail yeah, because well. because. If you're if you if if it isn't a penalty, uh, then what is it? You know, uh, and it, it it is a penalty before being found guilty. That's right. You yeah, know, you don't have to That's be right. guilty to be charged uh, and put uh, let out on bail. So if the crime is heinous, heinous enough, heinous, or heinous, okay, heinous. Uh, well, I think we got you to correct us all, uh, but <laughs> if if it. Uh, if it's murder, rape, uh, you know, assault with a deadly weapon, maybe we ought to just have no bail for those things mm -hmm. and allow bail to be for stealing a candy bar or uh, drunk driving or something, first offense like that or something. Well, and many times bail bail is, is put down hard on people who can least afford it. That's you what know. I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. It's a and, racial thing. Yeah. A lot of, there are a lot of, you know, blacks that can't afford uh, to be bailed. And so they end up spending, waiting 30, 90, a year in jail for. Oh, I, I, just quickly, I always had a theory that, that traffic tickets, if you really wanted to use them to make people pay traffic, should be equal or a percentage of what people make. Because you take somebody and you charge them $100 for a speeding ticket. And if they make a million dollars a year, they don't give a crap. But if yep. they're only making thirty-five thousand dollars a year, then that's a penalty. So the penalty that's should fair. be, you know, the, the 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 ticket should be equivalent to people's income. I know people used to drive in the commute lane just because they didn't care. They just say, okay, well, if I get caught, it's one time I get caught, yep. four hundred bucks. Who cares? Right. Anyway, listen, we got to go. I thank you very much, Josh. Good seeing you again, Alan. Good seeing you, Charlie. Nice of you to call, yep. even though you're away, uh, because we can see the hotel room thing on the back yep. door telling you how much the room rents for. Uh, and uh, uh, thank you very much, Kevin. And thank you, Jeff. I really appreciate it, everybody. Give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the citizen panel for tonight. And uh, let me just get rid of them so that uh, they can go over and hopefully be on Jack's show, uh, which comes up next, the intersection. Uh, he'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you again on Monday at 4 o'clock on, uh, uh, on Facebook. 
uh, with uh, the pop-up show. And then again, right back here. Yes, next week, Wednesday, uh, 10.30, Eastern Daylight Time. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay, good night, everybody. Thank you.